the largest birds on earth are ostriches. You can meet them at the desert and savannas in Africa. You won't see them in the sky as they are not capable of flying. You have to be careful though because instead they have adaptations to sprint very fast. What's interesting is an ostrich egg is actually one cell and at the same time is the largest living cell ever. It weighs over three pounds. Our objective is to understand the basic structure of the cell and its components. A cell is considered as the structural and functional unit of living organisms. Most cells have three main parts. Each of these main cell parts has a special and important function to do. The first is the cell membrane, which is a lipid bilayer membrane with proteins embedded in it. These proteins help in the movement of materials into and out of the cell. As we move inside the cell, we see the second important part of the cell, which is the cytoplasm. This cytoplasm is a gel-like liquid and is essentially salts and water. Various cell organelles and organic molecules remain suspended in it. In the center of the cell, we see the third most important part, which is the nucleus. The nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm by the nuclear membrane, which surrounds and protects. The pores which we can see on the nuclear membrane are the nuclear pores, which selectively allow the exchange of molecules between the cytoplasm and the nucleus. If we take a quick look inside the nucleus, we can see a large quantity of intertwined material, which looks like a mass of thread. This thread-like structure contains the DNA, which controls and directs the cell to produce proteins and perform its functions. Moving out of the nucleus, we see small, rounded structures called ribosomes. These are the miniature protein factories. The message for the production of specific proteins comes via the mRNA. The ribosomes assemble around the mRNA. A few of the ribosomes attach to a system of membranes known as the endoplasmic reticulum, ER, and start producing proteins. These proteins are needed for growth and many other cell processes. As the protein synthesis terminates, a protein gets formed and is pushed inside the ER. It moves along the tubes of the ER to another organelle, that is, the Golgi body. Golgi bodies are flat. They have folded sacs and act as post offices of the cell. Proteins and other materials are packaged and stored in the Golgi body. And when a molecule is needed elsewhere, the Golgi body distributes the material to other parts of the cell. When required, they also transport proteins outside the cell. Some nutrient molecules can also enter the cell. These nutrient molecules are absorbed by small organelles called lysosomes present in the cytoplasm. These lysosomes contain enzymes that digest these nutrient molecules. But where does the cell get the energy to do all this work? The organelle responsible for this is the mitochondrion. It is also known as the powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria release energy that the cell uses to carry out various life processes. Let us summarize. A cell is considered as the structural and functional unit of living organisms. Each cell has an outer envelope called the cell membrane. Inside the cell are organelles which are suspended in the cytoplasm. The most prominent one is the nucleus. Around the nucleus, we find some ribosomes and a network of tubes called ER. Other organelles seen in the cytoplasm are the Golgi bodies and the lysosomes. We also find mitochondria in the cell, which provide the cell with the required energy. 
digested food is processed in mitochondria in order to obtain energy. Single-celled eukaryotic organisms such as paramoecia are rich in mitochondria. Each individual cell may contain about 5,000 of them. Do you know that mitochondria have their own DNA as well? Dive into our video library to know all about this interesting cell organelle. Keep imbibing. We believe in you.